Let's have a big round of applause for Shelley Fabre. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Shelley, the star of Coach. You know what? I thought I thought they were going to do. I'm kind of surprised they didn't do. I thought they were going to start it out with with uh, Johnny Angel again. Yes, I did too. You got. I bet you have that happen every place you go. Say, let's dig up the old Johnny That's Angel. It. Well, not every place, but a lot of places do play it. I must say. <laughs> well, you're one of the rare people who's a star in a sitcom, and you've been a star in movies and and so forth over the years. Who has a big hit recording too? What, can I ask how old you were when that was recorded? Yes, I was uh, just turning 18 when we made that record. And that was well, that was on the heels of the success of the Donna Reed show. Yes, it was actually during the um, third year of the Donna Reed show. We were we were right in the middle of filming. It was in fact the idea of the producer of the Donna Reed show. He said, "We have a great idea for next season. We're going to have you and Paul Peterson each record a song, and uh, then we'll do it on the show." And um, I said. Um, well, Mr. Owen, that's a really good idea, excepting I, I can't sing, so I can't do it, <laughs> and, uh, which is true, I can't sing. But uh, we went back and forth for about three weeks, and he said, um, one day he said to me, now, kid, did you want to be on the show next year? And I was very naive. I didn't, I didn't catch the drift of what he was saying. So I answered very, you know, honestly, I said, oh, you know, yes, Mr. Owen, I would love to be on the show next year. I love being on the show. He said, good, then sing. And I went, <laughs> oh, I get it. Okay, now I get it. So that's how the, the recording career came about. You, of course, now on Coach. Coach has become, uh, I, I don't know if it's just since I met you the last time you were here. In fact, before we say anything else, I want to show something uh, that goes back to the last time you were here, which I remember it well. It was on July 19th, 1992. Yeah. And if we can show a tape yeah. from there, I believe everybody, if you'd look at the, um, here we go. Well, I appreciate the time of, of being able to come here and talk to you and especially to be able to meet Jackson's father on the oh, day of his birth. Thank you very this much, This is truly Charlie. a thrill. Congratulations to both you and your wife. He might, they might be watching together well, right Well, welcome, now. Jackson. Welcome. We're going to take a look at what... Yeah, well, the reason I bring that up is that was the day my son was born. Yes. I'll never forget that because we got <laughs> together then. I was a nervous wreck for That's two reasons. No. I couldn't believe it. I want to talk about... We're going to give people here a chance to talk to you a little bit about Coach because Great. I was going to say that's my favorite show now. And is it really? You know what makes it you. is because of the fact that you all bring in drama but yes. never let it override the comedy. It never becomes maudlin. And you are the master of comedic, understated indignation. Well, my gosh. But I want, gosh. No. And I was, you know, when, I came here no, when Coach says something dumb, you just give it that, like, and, and it's, <laughs> it's sort of not too much and not too anything. Thank you very much. But the show is a perfect combination of that, of being able to bring in, in the, the drama and, the, and, you know, it becomes a tearjerker and all of a sudden, boom, you're out yes. of it like that. Well, we have wonderful writers on the show. I mean, I'm thrilled with what you're saying. That's, uh, that's a great compliment to me, but also to the show. And I think it is one of the great strengths of our show that we have writers who have the ability to do exactly that. Um, we deal with very real situations and really, uh, on a dime, they turn it from tremendously funny stuff to, to very real, sometimes very touching, heartbreaking stuff. But that's good writing for Especially you. the one where um, uh, Jerry Van Dyke had, uh, had fallen in love with you. I mean, he, he, he indicated that he w had been in love with you yeah. lifelong and he had his will and, and so Isn't forth and it, it came out and you had to react with him on that. Yes. That has to be tough in a situation with a bunch of bozo comics. No, <laughs> as a matter of fact. No, that show was actually easy to do. I, I love Jerry Van Dyke so much. He is, um, he's, he's a wonderful actor, and he is acting during the show, but you should also know that Jerry Van Dyke is Luther Van Damme. <laughs> <I mean, laughs> he's all of those sweet, endearing qualities of Luther are, are very much Jerry. But as I said, that, that's not to take away from Jerry's acting ability, because he's really quite remarkable. But it was very easy for me to play um, reacting to, to Luther loving Christine because I, I have such warm feelings for Jerry myself that that was, that was easy. Today is a really big day for us here on Harrison Company because our special guest is Shelley Fabre and we figured with all these folks here why not have a press conference and I must <laughs> say Shelley this is probably the most ragtag press conference you ever had. Look at the way these people are dressed. Nobody look, dressed up today. They look this. pretty great. But we want to go to some <laughs> questions out here that the folks who are big fans of yours, because we packed them in today, might have. And who has a question? Somebody right down here. Let me uh, go to this woman right here, if you would. Stand up. What's your name? Ramona King. Well, Ramona, talk to Shelley. Uh, being the 13th of, of uh, Friday 13th, I mean. Yes. And I was born on Friday the 13th. Oh. And you're an actress, and they have their little thing. Do you believe in hexes of Friday the 13th? No, I... Um, uh, well, I, I think I'm a little bit superstitious, but for the most part, 
I try to think that those things are good luck instead of bad luck. You know, I just try to yes. turn them around and look at them in the other direction. Yes, so happy birthday. Happy happy birthday. And, and by the and way, she's not a triskaidekaphobic. That's what that means, right? Not a fair. Oh, I'm so Who else had a question back Whoa. here? Yes, ma'am, stand right up. Hi. Hi. Uh, What's your name? Beverly Guire. Hello, and I absolutely loved Johnny Angel oh, back yeah. years Very ago. Much. Me too. Uh, Thank you. If my boyfriend's name had been Johnny, it would have been a lot better. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they really coerced you into that? You've never done another song? Well, I actually did. Um, I mean, no, the story I told was true. That really is exactly what happened. But um, because Johnny Angel was such a big hit, uh, uh, truly, they had no idea that it would be a big hit either. They really thought that because the show was popular that it would sell some records. Um, but uh, nobody had any idea that it was going to sell the amount of records that it did. But what happened as a result of that, unfortunately for me, was that because the record was such a big hit, then I had to go in and record an album. I mean, 12 more songs. I oh was wow. terrified. Then they, they kept having me do more recordings. And as each record sold successively less, I'd go to the <laughs> record company. And they did. Each one just went right to... And each time, I'd go to them and I'd say, see, it's selling less now, so we can stop doing this, right? And they go, no, no, we'll, we'll try doing it just a little bit more. So ultimately, I ended up doing like four albums and about ten different singles. Wow. Uh, Paul Peterson and I did um, uh, one album with Jimmy Darren. We did the, uh, the cast, uh, the, the songs from Bye Bye Birdie. And then they did a, a compilation album of Jimmy and Paul and I because we were all on the same album. And then I did two on my own. And... Uh, I, I, it never got easier. It was always terrifying and embarrassing. I'm very grateful, in truth, for the experience because I've had a lot of wonderful conversations with people through the years because people loved Johnny Angel. They loved the record itself, and so many people have fond memories about it. I mean, I'll be walking down the street, and sometimes somebody will point at me, and they'll start singing the song. I mean, it's just <laughs> amazing to me, and that's a long time ago. But... Um, Anyway, so I'm very grateful for the experience, but at the moment, having to stand, uh, just very briefly, I, um, I remember at that time when, when I was recording, there, there was a core group of musicians that really recorded for, with everybody. I mean, when Frank Sinatra was recording, when Bobby V, when Sarah Vaughan, when Ella Fitzgerald, and I remember that, uh, that I was standing there and it was time for me to get up and sing, and I heard two of the musicians talking. One was looking at his appointment book and saying to the other one, um, are you doing Frank's session tonight? And he went, no, 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 I'm doing Ella's, but I'll, I'll, I'll be over to Frank's when I'm, I, and you know who they're oh talking Lord. about. And then somebody said, Shelly, now do you want to get up to the mic and start singing? And I just thought, <laughs> if the earth would just open up and let me fall through, please. What was your boyfriend's name? Don't say it. Oh. <laughs> Actually, his name was Claude, and Claude's an angel, you know, that would never have made it. He, he liked Soldier Boy. Oh, oh did he? Okay, <laughs> so did I. Hey, you know what? A lot of people didn't know your husband is Mike Farrell, B.J. Yes. Honeycutt of, of yes. that fame. See, you, you folks didn't know that. Yes. Okay. I guess. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to take a break. Be back in a moment with more on Harrison Company.